This video will look at interest only loans in the context of recursion and financial modelling for further mathematics. So what are interest only loans? When we're talking about an interest only loan, this is a special case where the regular repayment is equal to the interest that is being charged by the bank. So we still have that interest being charged, but the payment amount is equal to it. And so we can see in this little example here of an amortization table, the balance of our loan doesn't actually change because the amount of interest that is being charged is equal to the payment, so the principal reduction or the balance reduction is zero. And so that means for the entire length of that loan, the balance will remain at its starting point. Now, we are able to use Finance Solver to help us calculate um, values around interest-only loans, but sometimes it's easier to just simply calculate the payment amount using that formula below. So remembering that D is our payment amount, V0 is the balance or the principal of the loan, our starting point, R is our interest rate per annum divided by C compounding periods, so adjusting for any compounds throughout the year. Just like all of our other types of loans and investments, we can model this using a recurrence relation. So just because our balance is staying the same, it doesn't mean that we aren't still finding that rate and our payment amount. And so even though we know the value that the rate will add on to the balance is equal to the amount that will be subtracted in the payment, we still have ability to calculate those values there. When you're looking at questions around this, you are looking for that keyword interest only loan. So they will use that keyword, the key phrase interest only. So make sure you're looking out for that. Know that the balance will always remain constant if it is this type. So quite often a question will simply be, what is the balance of the loan after 10 years or after 50 repayments? It can be a trick question if you're not sure what it is that you're dealing with. And remember, there is no general rule for any of these combined models, so we can use Finance Solver, and we'll look at an example soon. A couple of other key things to remember before we move on to examples. When you need to um, find D, or you're required to find the principal, it is much easier in those scenarios to use the formula for that D value. Types of questions though where Finance Solver can be really useful or can be used is if you're asked to find the value of the payment required, so finding D, if you know other aspects of the loan but you're asked to find the interest rate, or if you're looking at the impact of changing conditions. So often you will see an interest only scenario as part of a bigger question where perhaps the first half of the loan is a reducing balance. Some key things to remember when using Finance Solver, the balance will remain constant, so that means your principal value, your PV value, is the same number, however, the sign changes. So remember, if we're putting money into the bank, um, we put it as a negative. If we're taking money or getting money from the bank, that's a positive. So we just make sure our PV and our FV, same number, but different sign. And for any scenario at all, you can just set N as 1, although if you set it as 30 payments or 100 payments, it's not going to alter the outcome. This first example is looking at one where we would utilise the formula rather than Finance Solver. So Chance would like to purchase an investment property. He has sourced an interest-only loan with interest being charged at a rate of 2.8% per annum and compounding monthly. Given Chance can afford to make monthly repayments of 3,500, find the maximum amount he can borrow. So in this scenario here, we're being asked to find what is our PV or, if we're thinking in terms of recurrence relations, our initial value. So whenever we're asked to find the initial value, we want to be using the rule to find the payments which is our D equals V0 times R over C over 100. And so we want to construct an equation. We will have everything except for one piece of information. So we have our monthly payments of $3,500. We're being asked to find that initial value or the principal. 
we have our interest rate of 2.8% per annum and that is compounding monthly, so 12 times a year over 100. Now obviously on our page we would write that as our working but in our calculator we don't put V0, we just put a variable to solve. And so looking at that now, we go into solve, put in our equation as we had it. I'm just going to solve for V, so I'm going to have V and our 2.8 over 12 over 100 and that's telling me that Chance can borrow um, $1.5 million or 1,500,000 and so there we're giving our final answer. Okay so here's quite a typical um, interest only loan question. We have Shirley who would like to purchase a new home. She'll establish a loan for $225,000 with interest being charged at 3.6% per annum compounding monthly. Each month Shirley will only pay the interest charge. So you can see there they've mentioned um, the interest only in that sentence there. After three years the amount that Shirley will owe is. So this is where we could potentially grab our calculator and put in all that information and find out what our future value is. However, hopefully we've picked up that it's an interest only loan and so therefore her balance always stays the same. Okay, so our balance is always um, equal to our principal value and so in that ca this case it's $225,000. So we actually don't need to do any working out here. We're just understanding that that's the concept they're testing us on and can go straight to the answer. In this next example, so we're still dealing with Shirley and her loan. Okay, so we've still got a principal value of 225,000, interest charge at 3.6 per annum, compounding monthly, and only paying the interest, so an interest only loan. But now we want to model this as a recurrence relation. So this is a question where you have an option to either utilize the formulas that we have to find D and to find R or we can look to um, use finance over to help us out a little bit too. So first thing to remember our initial value V0 is the principal. We take this value of our interest rate and that we're compounding monthly to calculate big R. So remember that's 1 plus the rate over 12 over 100 which gives us a value of 1.003. That means we can eliminate um, option B and option E. We can also eliminate option A because we must also have a payment amount to make it interest only so that it remains stable. And so here we can either calculate our value of D again by using the, the little formula with V0 with our rate over 12 over 100 which gives us a payment of $675. That means that we can put all of those pieces together and see that D is our answer. But I'm going to show you quickly how you could get that payment amount from your finance solver as well. Okay, so jumping into our finance solver. Now we can just leave N as one or you can have multiple payments, that's up to you. It won't alter the outcome. Our interest rate per annum was 3.6%. Our principal value, she borrowed $225,000. We're going to come back and solve for the payment amount. Our future value will remain constant but negative. So negative $225,000. And then our payments are 12 times and our compounds 12 times a year. So we do adjust there. When I go back to my payment and press enter to solve, I can see there I get my negative $675, which means I have to pay the bank $675 each month. So in the alternative using Finance Solver, 
it is just being aware as well that it won't give you the only option there. There are two with payments of 675 and it's knowing that you should be then looking to the rates and knowing that it is being adjusted compounding monthly so it can't be 3.6% um, represented in that big R value. So the final example here is another one where we're looking to use Finance Solver to help us find a payment amount. So Andrew borrowed $10,000 to pay for a holiday and other expenses. The interest on this loan will be charged at the rate of 12.9% per annum, and that's compounding monthly. Immediately after the interest is calculated and charged each month, Andrew will make a repayment. For the first year of the loan, Andrew will make interest-only repayments on each month. What is the value of that interest-only repayment? And so here, obviously, the first thing we are looking for is this interest-only section, and then we're identifying what information do we have. So we have our principal value, he's borrowing $10,000. We have our interest rate, and we know that that is compounding monthly, so 12 times a year. We're wanting to find what is my payment, and given that it is interest only, we know that our future value will be negative 10,000, so the same as our um, principal value. So we can go ahead and pop that in our calculator and solve for our payment amount. And so again, in our finance solver, we can put our number of um, payments in as any value that we like. We can put it as one or we can do it for the whole first year. That won't make a, a change there. Our interest rate was 12.9%. He borrowed $10,000, so that's our principal. We'll come back and solve our PMT and our future value is negative $10,000. The payments and the compounds are happening monthly. So if we come back around and solve for our payment amount, so Andrew will need to make payments of $107.50. And just a reminder, when you are writing that answer, that monetary answer, we always go to two decimal places with those dollar values. So remembering to put that as 0 0.50 for 50 cents. Okay, that's all. There's not a huge amount of examples for um, interest only. It's more important you understand, I guess, the um, key components of all the properties of an interest only loan so that you can find some little shortcuts into how to answer those types of questions. Okay, good luck.